So in this chapter, we are going to learn how to make decisions, okay, which is very useful in all advanced programming languages. So in this one, in this course, we learn C sharp. However, in other programming languages, for example, in C++ or in MATLAB or in Python, so uh, you have similar things. Okay, that's why I have mentioned. So in order to uh, be professional in computer programming, so you pick at the one advanced language, okay? Try to learn as much as possible for other programming languages. So you will see it's very similar. Okay, a lot of similarity between the uh, among different languages. Okay, try to learn one in depth will be very helpful. It will be very helpful. So uh, for the decision structures, basically you need to use if statement. Okay, if that is a keyword reserved in Visual Studio C Sharp. Okay, a control structure is a logical logical code design that controls the way in which statements execute. The types of program control structures include the first one, it is sequence struct structure, which are sets of statements that execute in the order that they appear. We have learned this, right? We have a bunch of different statements. When we run your application, right? When you run your application, so all the statements will be executed one by one, okay, one by one. So this is the only type of structure we have used so far, okay? In chapter two and chapter three. So we learn how to write different statements and all statements will be executed one by one by following sequential pattern, okay, sequential pattern. So the second structure is decision structure. So which execute some statements only under certain circumstances. For example, when we calculate your final letter grade, right? So you will be awarded A only if your final percentage grade is no less than 92%. Okay, 92%. So no less than 92% will be the condition. So the letter grade A will be awarded, okay? It means that statement will be executed when the condition percentage grade is about is no less than 92% is satisfied. Okay, when that condition is satisfied. So an action is performed only if a certain condition exists. Okay, that is the decision structure. So also known as selection structure or selection structure. Why we call it? Because we will learn. So if is the basic st statement, you will also learn if else. So for if else, you have one structure, so which can be separated in two parts. In the first part is for if. It means if the condition is satisfied, we are going to execute statements in the if, if part, okay, if part. However, if the condition is not satisfied, Okay, it is violated. So we are going to do the else part. You see, it depending on the condition, it depends on the condition, right? So we are going to select whether we are going to execute the if part or the else part. Okay, the else part. That is why it is also known as selection structures. Okay, selection structures. In chapter five, we are going to learn the third structure, which is Iteration structures. What is that? It is loops, basic loops. Okay, for example, we are still using the grid example, okay, to illustrate this structure. For example, I want to calculate the final grade for all the students. For all the students. So one strategy is I write one if statement for each student. Okay. You see that we have around 40 to 50 students in the class, in this class. It means I have to write 40 to 50, right? Uh, if statements for each student. However, that is not a good strategy. Why? Because if we can use the iteration structure, it means we just write one if statement, but that if statement will be executed for each student, okay? For each student. Then we can use simple statements, only one if statement, 
to deal with all the students, to deal with all the students. So we call it loops, okay, loops. So the decision structure and iteration structures are very useful in data analysis. Why? Because, so in the beginning, why you want to load a data, right? You have a lot of different entries. For example, you have a table, right? Excel work worksheet. So the first step is to load your Excel worksheet in, in your program, in C Sharp or in Python, in C++. When you load the data, and the next step is to process the data. So in order to process the data, so you may want to delete, okay, noisy data, delete missing data, right? You also want to cut to process useful information in the data. For example, how to delete a missing data? You check, right? Check the cell. If the entry is empty, then you delete it. You see, I use the if statement. If the entry is, is empty, right? I delete this row or, de or delete this cell. For iteration, I want to sum up. For example, I want to sum up the numbers of all the inputs. Then in this case, I have to go through all the entry, uh, data entries, then sum up the numbers. In this case, I need to uh, uh, conduct the addition, addition oper operation line by line. Okay, this is iteration. Okay, this is iteration. So in this chapter, we are going to learn the second one, decision structures, so decision structures. So this is one very simple example, a simple decision structure, a single alternative decision structure provides one alternative path of execution. The if statement can be used to write such structures. The general form is if, then you can see that after if, we have a pair of parentheses, okay, parentheses. Inside this, uh, inside this pair of parentheses, you have an expression, or we call it a condition or condition. So this expression will be evaluated to see if the expression is true or false. So if, you see on the uh, right, right part, I have a flow chart for this if statement. So we have code outside, right? This is the expression, okay? This is the expression. If the condition, the condition is true, you see if it is true, so the action, which means inside this pair of curly braces, okay, this pair of curly braces, will be statement where a code to wear a coat. So if this expression condition code outside is not true, in other words, it is false. Okay, it is false. Then so the C sharp will skip over this whole pair of curly braces. This pair of curly braces will be skipped. Okay, skipped, and the statement where code, which is inside these curly braces, will not be executed. It will not be executed, okay? You see here, it's a selection process. So which depends on the expression inside this pair of parentheses, of parentheses. So if this expression, use this example, code outside is true, so the inside statements uh, the statements inside this pair of parentheses will be executed. In this example, we have where code. Okay, this is where code. So if the condition code outside is not true, it is false, then the whole pair of parentheses will be skipped. Okay, it will be skipped. It means, so C sharp will skip this whole part and move to the next statement which is uh, uh, after this whole if structure, okay, whole if structure. So what you need to understand is how if this if structure works, okay? How if this structure, uh, this if structure works. So is a key theme is the, this expression. If this expression is true, so C sharp will go inside. Otherwise, C sharp will jump over the whole if part, okay? A whole if structure, then move to the next statement. Okay, move to the next statement. So the 
the next thing you need to be uh, to understand is the expression above is a Boolean expression that can only be evaluated as either true or false. It means inside the, this pair of parentheses, you will have return value true or false. Okay, true or false. C sharp will evaluate this expression by using two different values, true or false. Okay, true or false. Okay, this is a very simple decision structure, very simple decision structure, true or false. So for if the if statement, the if statement decide decides whether a section of code executes or not. This can include multiple code statements. Okay. You see that here if code outside, the code outside, then in the in this pair of curly braces, we have three different statements. We have where code. We have wear hat and the wear gloves. Okay, we have three different statements. It means if the condition code or side is true, we are going to execute these statements. So among these uh, for these three different statements, they will be executed by following the sequential pattern. Okay, sequential pattern. It means wear code will be the first one, wear hat will be the second one, wear gloves will be the third one, okay? However, if the condition code outside is not true, it is false. In this case, the whole if part, which means the whole, everything inside this pair of parentheses, pair of curly braces, will be skipped, will be skipped. You see that here, the uh, idea is for the if statement, okay, for the if statement, so you can have multiple lines of statements inside this pair of curly braces, okay? So you can see in the previous one, we only have one, where a code, okay, where a code. In this example, we can have three different statements, where code, where hat, and where gloves, where three different statements, okay? In practice, we we'll work on your project. So in the if part, okay, in this pair of curly braces, you can have any number of uh, statements, okay? Statement, anything inside this pair of parentheses, uh, curly braces will be considered as statements associated with this if condition, the if condition. <clears throat> so you see that, note that the use of curly braces to block several statements together, okay, several statements together. So you may ask, you may ask, can we ignore this pair of curly braces? It means that can we do not use the symbol curly braces? Okay, what will happen? Okay, what will happen if without the curly braces? So we will illustrate it later. Okay, we'll learn later. So what will happen if there are no curly braces after the if statements? Okay, we will learn how it it, it will work. How it will work. So for this inside, for this inside expression, okay, for this inside expression, we have some relational operators. Okay, we have some relational operators. A relational operators determines whether a specific relationship exists between two values. So we have greater, greater than, okay? is the question is, is x greater than y? We have less than, that means this is, if is x less than y, we have greater than or equal to, okay? We have greater than or equal to. So it is, is x greater than or equal to y? We have less or equal to, less than or equal to. We have equal to, okay? This is a tricky one, okay? This is a tricky one. So it is not only one equal sign. You need two equal signs for relational operator. Okay, relational operator. If you use one equal sign, you will have a logic error. Okay, logic error. So the last one is not equal to. Okay, x mention equal. Okay, two symbols. That is not equal. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have five, six different relational operators. Okay. 
So let me use one very simple example to illustrate, okay, this. Uh, so if I use this one, okay, if I use if uh, x is greater than y, okay, x is greater than y, and if let's assume x equals five, okay, y equals three, okay. So if x equals five, y equals three. So then we check this condition inside this pair of parentheses. We have x greater than y. So C sharp will check if based on the current values of x and y. Is the condition x is greater than y true or not? Five, if we compare x equals five, y equals three, five is greater than y. Okay, that condition is true. It means so this expression will return a true value. So if we have a pair of curly braces, right? After this, okay. So after inside this curly braces, the condition is true, C sharp will go inside, go inside. However, if X is three, Y is five, okay? If, if X is three, Y equals five. The current value is X three, Y five. C sharp, when C sharp evaluates, X is greater than Y. So C sharp will check, okay? if three is greater than five. Okay, that condition is false because three is less than five, not greater than five. So in this case, the condition X is greater than Y will be false, okay? It is false, it means, so this pair of curly braces will be skipped. It will be skipped and the statement inside this pair of curly braces will be skipped. Okay, everything will be skipped. So that is one example to illustrate how you understand this logical expression, logical expression. So another example is if, right, If a x is greater or equal than y, okay? So in the exam, so I will give you some problem to ask to do these simple statements, okay? So the coding questions in the exam will not be very complicated, okay? Will not be very complicated. It will be based on the examples we have learned in the lecture, okay? So maybe very similar as one example, okay, as the one example, maybe similar as combination of two examples, or two examples. So this is uh, another example, X is greater or equal than Y. So in this case, if we have X x equals 3, y equals 6, okay, y equals 6. Then C sharp will check if 3 is greater or equal than 6, that is false, okay, that is false. It means this if structure will be skipped. However, if x is 3, y is also 3, okay, then in this case, 3, if 3 is less, greater or equal than 3, it is true because three equals three, okay, three equals three. So in this case, the condition is true and the statements inside the curly braces will be executed, will be executed. So this is how we understand it. For example, another thing is not equal, okay? Not equal means, so X equals three, Y also equals three, okay? Y also equals three. So the condition will be if three not equal to three. However, three equals three, right? It means 
you have to be very clear, right? If x is 3, y is 3, so x not equal to 3, so that is true, okay? You have to be very clear because, no, sorry, uh, that is false, okay? Because 3 equals 3, so not equal 3 will be false. In, but another example is I want to use double equal sign to check if x equal y, okay? You have to use double equal sign. That is very important. How you, if you write this, okay? If you only have y equal sign, x equal y, so this is an error. Okay, this is an error, okay? You have to use two equal signs to represent logical equal. I want to say if x equals y, so f is 3, y is also 3, then this condition x equals 3 will be true, okay, will be true, okay, will be true. So this is how you understand this logical operators, okay, that is the first thing I want to say. So for the second thing, okay, <clears throat> you may uh, have noticed we have greater or equal sign, okay, greater or equal logic. So in computer programming in C sharp, if you want to present, okay, greater or equal, you need two symbols. First one is greater, second one is equal. Okay, two symbols. In the exam, if I ask you if you need to use greater or equal, this is a correct symbol. However, if you use this okay if you use this symbol this is also greater or equal it is the mathematics okay this is not a valid logic operator in c sharp so this is wrong okay this is wrong okay this is wrong so in the exam, if you use this, if you use this, then it is wrong. Okay, it is wrong. You have to use greater or equal is one greater sign, then followed by an equal sign. That is greater or equal. Okay, you have to be very careful. Okay, you have to be very careful. Because, so in the exam, you have to type the statements by yourself. Okay, you need to be careful about all the logical symbols, the logical symbols. So this is relational operators. We have six in total. We have greater than, we have less than, we have greater than or equal to, we have less than or equal to, we have equal to, we have not equal to, okay? So in your project, why you need to use a uh, if statement, okay, in your projects? You have to be careful which one is the correct one, which one is the correct one. So this is a if statement code example, okay? So we have a variable sales. If condition is we need to have a pair of parentheses, okay, pair of parentheses. <clears throat> if sales is greater than 50,000, okay, if sales is greater than 50,000, then bonus equals 500, okay? This is a condition. So it means C sharp will check this, this condition. Sales is greater than 50,000. If the condition is true, okay, then bonus equals 500. Otherwise, it, it means if the condition is false, right, this whole if structure will be skipped. Okay, this whole if structure will be skipped. So, Programming style and if statements. Okay, then we learn that an if statement can span more than one line. However, it is still one statement. Okay, one statement. Let's see this. If average is greater than 95, 95, grid equals A. So grid is a char variable, C H A R char variable. Okay. And if we have a simple letter, not a string, we have uh, single quote, not double quote, okay, single quote. So letter A, it means if average is above 95, grade equals A, okay? You see that in this example, 
we don't have we don't have a pair of curly braces. Okay, we don't have the curly braces symbol. So uh, after the if if part, okay, the if part. So if that is the case, okay, if that is the case, okay, then basically it means it means so this if structure has only one statement associated with it. Okay, so this one is functionally equivalent to if average is above 95, grid equals. You can put these two, if, both if and that statement in one line. But although this is this part, the second, second way, it is not a syntax error. The second example above uses poor programming style. Okay, it is not professional. So it means, in practice, a professional programmer will not do the second thing, okay? Write the statement and the if condition in one line, okay? So these two things will be separated in two different lines, okay? They will be, they will be separated in two different lines, okay? two different lines. Now here is a question, okay, I just mentioned. So what if we don't have the pair of curly braces? A pair of curly braces. So let me use this example, okay? Use this example to explain to explain that. So here we have the example. Okay, let me. Uh, So this is the example I copied directly from the slides, okay, from the slides. We have an if statement, and we have a pair of curly braces, and we have three lines of statements inside this pair of curly braces, okay? This is the example I just copied from the slides. So it means if code outside condition is true, right? All three statements were code, were had, were gloves. These three statements we will be executed one by one based on the sequential order, okay? Where code will be the first one, then where hat. The last one will be where gloves, okay? So that is for the if structure. If the code outside is not true, it is not true, then the whole everything, okay? Everything inside this pair of curly braces will be skipped, okay? Everything will be skipped. Now the question is if we don't have this, Okay, we have this, okay? Like the example, this one, this one in the slides, okay? There are no curly braces in this if structure, okay? Just statements. So if this is the case, if this is the case, we don't have pair of curly braces, then only the one following if expression will be considered as the one associated with if structure. Okay, what do I mean? It means, so this program will be executed in the following way. So if the code outside is true, if it is true, then C sharp will, wear, you will execute where code, then where hat, where gloves. That is fine. However, if this condition is false, Okay, if this condition is false and not true, because only this one, first one, we don't have a pair of curly braces, only where code, only the one following if this if expression will be considered as the uh, condition expression. That one, where code will be skip, skip, uh, skipped, okay? Where code will be skipped, so where hat, where gloves, these two are not associated with the if code outside. They are outside the if structure. Okay, in other words, they are outside the if structure. Only where code is inside the if structure. It means if code outside is false, then only the first statement where code will be skipped. Okay, C sharp will execute where hat then wear gloves. You see, it's quite different, right? When we have the pair of curly braces, 
if code outside is false, all three statements where code, where head, where glass will be skipped. However, if we don't have this pair of uh, curly braces, so if the code outside condition is false, right, only the first one where code will be skipped. Okay, the next two where head, where glass, gloves will be executed anyway. It will be executed anyway. Okay, that is the example. OK, it means if we don't have the pair of curly braces or curly braces, then only the first statement following the if structure will be inside the if structure. OK, all the others will be considered as outside the if structure. So that's come to my recommendation. So in your project, where well, my recommendation is always use if a pair of curly braces for if structure. Even though for this example, you only have one statement, right? Inside this if structure, always try to use the pair of curly braces, okay? Pair of curly braces. That will clarify the code. That will make your code easier to read, easier to read, okay? So programming style rules you should follow. So the conditionally executed statement should be on the line after the if statement. Okay. The uh, the conditionally executed statement should be indented one level from the if condition. You see, so this uh. uh Right, all the statements for the if structure will be indented for one level. Okay, that's there is indentation. Okay, indentation. So if an if statement does not have the block curly braces, the block curly braces structure is not there. So it is ended by the first semicolon encountered after the if statement. So it means for this one, we don't have the block curly braces structure. So this if will end here, okay, it will end here. The wear hat, wear gloves, these two statements are not inside the if structure, okay, the if structure. So for this concept, you have to be very clear, okay, you have to be very clear. So we have some examples. Example one, assume that there is a int variable grid and a string variable letter grade. Write an if statement to set letter grade equal to A if grade is no less than 92. Okay, here you need to tip, uh, pay attention to the condition. The condition is grade is no less than 92. Okay, no less than means greater or equal. Greater or equal. So for this one, you can have if grade is greater or equal than 92, letter grade equals double quote A, okay? Here we have string variable letter A, okay? So you see that here we, we I, I did not use a pair of curly braces, but when you write your own answer, okay? When you write your own answer, so I recommend you to write the curly braces. It means your solution will, will like this, okay? will be like this, okay? You need to have, okay? That will be your, that be your answer, okay? You need to keep this pair of uh, the block calibrated structure, okay? So for the second example, assume that there is a int variable grid and a char variable or letter grid. Write an if statement to set letter grid equal to A if grid is no less than 92, or grid is no less than 92. So here, if grid is greater or equal to 92, letter grid equals A. Here, the prop, the tricky part is, the letter grid is a chart, chart variable, okay? It is not a string, string variable. It is a chart, it is a single character variable, okay? Single char character variable, for a single character variable, you need to use single quotes. OK, 
okay, you're going to need to use single quote. For this tricky part, you need to be careful, be careful about it. So be careful. So block if statements, conditionally executed statements, can be grouped into a block by using curly braces to enclose them. If curly braces are used to group conditionally executed statements, the if statement is ended by the closing curly braces. It means if you need multiple lines of statements for the if structure, you need the block curly braces structure. Okay. For example, in this example, we still have one if expression. Inside this, this if expression, we have statement one, statement two. We have this. And for this one, you need to use a block curly braces structure. It means all the statements inside this pair of curly braces will be considered for be considered inside the if structure. Okay, the if structure. So remember that when the curly braces are not used, then only the next statement after the, the if condition will be executed conditionally, okay, conditionally. So as this example, if we don't have the pair of curly braces, so if this expression is true, C sharp executes statement one, then move to statement two, then statement three. However, if this expression is false because there are no curly braces, okay? So only the first one, statement one, will be inside the if structure. Statement two and statement three are outside the if structure, okay? In other words, if the expression is false, state, statement one will be skipped. Statement two and statement three will be executed anyway. Always be executed, okay, these two statements. So what, that's why I recommend when you build your own if statement, always try to use a pair of curly braces, okay? That can avoid this kind of problem, okay? Avoid this kind of problem. So this is a potential error that you should be careful to avoid when you wish to have multiple statements conditionally executed, okay? You have to be careful. So we have some examples. Assume that there are three int variables, x, y, and z. x equals five, y equals three, z equals eight. What will be the values of x, y, z after the following statements are executed, okay, are executed? So let's analyze this example line by line, okay, line by line. Okay, we have Okay, that is uh, okay, that is okay. So So we have the condition if z is greater or greater than eight, okay? Before that, we have what? We have the slides. We have x is five, y is three, z equals eight, okay? We have x is five, y equals three, 
it. OK, we have this. So for this example. So before this, before we execute this if statement, right? X is five, Y is three, Z equals eight. OK, then we move to this if statement. The condition is Z is greater than eight. OK. So for this statement, Z equals eight. OK. Then C sharp is going to check if Z eight is greater than eight. OK, the condition eight is greater than eight. That condition is false. Because eight equals eight, not greater than eight. OK, so the condition. So Z is greater than eight is false. OK, it is not true. It is false. Because the equals eight, not greater than eight. OK, so this is false. So after this A, after this if, right, we do not have any block curly braces structure. We don't have curly braces. It means only the first one, right? Only the first statement will be considered inside the if structure. The other two will be considered outside the if structure. OK, it means so C sharp because the condition is false. C sharp will jump over, right? This statement X minus equals Y will be skipped. OK, it will be skipped. Then C sharp move to next one. Y divide equals X, right? Y divide equals X. That will be executed, OK? <clears throat> For that statement, you need to use the knowledge we learned last week, which is, so what is y divide equals x? So it is y equals y divided by x. OK, that is equivalent to y equals y divided by x. We learned this, we learned it, this part uh, last week. We learned it last week. So for y equals y divided by x, C sharp will first execute, calculate y divided by x. Then assign the result value to the left, which is the y. Okay, y equals y divided by x. Also, all the three variables, x, y, z, are int variables. Okay, are int variables. We have also learned, so for int variables, when we do calculations without any type of transformation for int variables, the fractional part, the decimal part, will be cut off. It will be, it will be ignored. It will be truncated, right? So in this case, y, right, y is 5. Or y is y equals 3, right? x equals 5, right? x equals 5. So Y divided Y divided by X is three divided by five. Okay, three divided by five. Okay, three divided by five. So the exact result will be 0 0.6. Three divided by five will be 0 0.6, right? It will be 0 0.6. Okay. However, because X, Y, and Z, all three variables are int variables, the fractional part, 0 0.6 part will be cut off okay it will be cut off okay it will be cut off it means y equals zero okay y equals zero okay y equals zero because three divided by five is 0 0.6 right 0 0.6 part will be uh, truncated so y equals zero y equals zero. Then C sharp move to next line, the next one. Which is Z, right? Percentage sign is modulus. We learned it last time. Z percentage equals X, okay? So for this one, it is equivalent to Z equals Z modulus X, okay? Z modulus X, okay? So Z is eight, 
x is 5, right? Z modulus x is so the remainder of Z. Z is 8, right? 8 divided by 5, right? 8 divided by 5, we want to find remainder. 8 divided by 5, remainder is 3. Okay, 3. So Z equals 3. Okay, Z equals 3. So when we finalize the execution of these statements, we can find X. The value of X has not been changed because this line has been skipped. The if condition is false, this line for X has been skipped. Okay, so it means after we execute the three statements, X is still five. Okay, so we finish the second line of a statement. So Y is zero. Okay, Y is zero. Okay. So in the third line, we have calculated, right? We have executed the third line. We got Z equals three, okay? You have to be very clear. So when we finish the execution of all the statements, X equals five, Y equals zero, Z equals three. Z equals three, okay? Z equals three. So I give you this example. I try to explain all the details of this example because in the future, in the future, when you work with a large project, especially data-driven project, you want to analyze data. Okay. So you need to make sure that the result of from each statement will be fully correct. Because if there is a simple error in one statement, okay. It's, it is quite possible you will have a lot of you all the future calculation will be wrong okay, you have to make sure that every single step have to be correct okay so this is how it works you need to execute each statement by yourself where you find logical errors then you run the c sharp application you want to compare if the results from the c sharp execution are the same as your calculation, your calculation. If they are the same, you're confident at least this step is correct. Otherwise, there is something wrong. Okay, you need to check the details. You need to check the details. Okay. So the example two, assume that in the above example, the if statement is changed to if z is greater or equal to eight, what will be the values of x? Y, Z after the above statements are executed. So in this case, we want to analyze the example again, right? We want to analyze the example again. So, but in this case, the condition is Z is greater or equal to eight. Okay, Z is greater or equal to eight. Okay, Z is greater or equal to eight. So in this case, so because in the beginning, Z equals eight, right? The condition is Z is greater or equal to eight. Now in this example, the condition Z is greater or equal to eight. That condition is true. Okay, it is true, it is not false, it is true. So it means Z is eight, so Z is the equals eight, so Z is greater or equal to eight will be true. Okay, true. So it is because it is true, the statement x minus equal to equals eight will not be skipped. It, it will not be skipped. So x minus equals two, it is x equals x minus y. Okay x minus equals y, it is equivalent to x equals x minus y. x equals x minus y. So in this case, x is 5, y is 3, right? x is 5, y is 3. So 5 minus 3, x equals 5 minus 3 equals 2, okay? Okay, x equals 2. Okay. 
Then we go there, y divided equals x. So it is equivalent to y equals y divided by x. But after this statement, x equals 2 now, not 5, right? x equals 2. So y is 3, but now x equals 2, right? x equals 2. So in this case, 3 divided by 2 will be 1.5, right? 1.5. Still, x, y, and z, all three variables are int variables. So the 0.5 part will be truncated. So y equals 1. Okay, y equals 1. So we move to here, z modulus equals x. Okay, it is z equals z modulus x. Okay. The remainder of z is 8, right? Z is 8. X have been changed to 2. Okay, 2. So the remainder of z, 8 divided by 2, is 0. It is 0. So z equals 0. Okay, z equals 0. 8 divided by 2, there is no remainder. It is remainder is 0. So z equals 0. So after this new uh, analysis, by changing the condition with the new condition, we have x equals 2, y equals 1, z equals 0. OK? So with these two examples, you can observe one very obvious result, which is, so one of, with a very small change, right? With a very small change. So with a very small change, uh, the results of x, y, and z will be quite different. That's why I keep mentioning you need to be careful when you work on a big project. Because most of the time, the logical error are from some very simple problem. Very simple problem. You see here, with only one tiny revision, small revision of the condition, the revision is from z is greater than 8 to z is greater or equal to 8. The results of x, y, and z are quite different. Okay, uh, they are quite different. Okay? So this is one example, one example illustrate this, the, uh, uh, this phenomenon. Okay? From the first one, x is 5, y is 0, z equals 3. From the second one, x is 2, y equals 1, z equals 0, because z is equal 0. So 4.2, the if-else statement. An if-else statement will execute one block of code statements if its Boolean expression is true, or another block if its Boolean expression is false. Thus, it, it is a dual alternative decision structure. It has two pairs, an if clause and an else clause, okay? It is an uh, improvement of the if structure, okay? You see that we have two things, if and else, with only one expression. You see, you only have one expression in the if part. There is no, there is no expression associated with else because that is enough, well, that is enough. So while the expression is true, so C sharp will select the if block of curly braces. Otherwise, it means if the expression is false, the if block curly braces will be skipped. And C sharp will pick the else block of curly braces to execute. Okay? It means depend, it depends on the true or false of the expression. If it is true, if part will be selected and executed. Otherwise, else part will be selected and executed. Okay, this is, it is a dual alternative decision structure. Okay, if it's true, do we do if. Otherwise, we do else. Okay, we do else. So here is one example. Okay, we have a temp variable, temperature. 
So temp, temp, if temperature is above 40, you see we have if. If we have an expression for the if, right? If temperature is above 40, so we display a message hot. Okay, else means if temperature above 40 is not true. In other words, temperature is below 40, right? When TMP is less or equal than 40, then this condition will be false. So in this case, C sharp will do the else part. Okay, we'll do the else part. The if part, okay, the if part will be skipped. For the else part, C sharp will display the message code. Okay, it means depend on depending on the temp value, the value of temp, C sharp, right? C sharp will pick if or else to execute. You want a uh, one of if or else to execute, to execute, okay? So this is one example. This is one example, okay? Assume that there is a int variable grade and a string variable letter grade. Write an if else statement to set letter grade equal to pass. If grade is no less than 70 and fail otherwise, okay? So you see that now we have if or otherwise. It means we need to use if else. So the the answer is as follows. So if the condition will be great, is greater or equal than 70, then you see that I use a pair of curly braces structure. Letter grade equals it is a string, double quote pass, semicolon. Else with another block curly brace structure, letter grade equals double quote fail. Okay, double quote fail. Okay, it, it is if else. So here I need to uh, mention one thing. Okay, I need to mention one thing. So if for this specific question, okay, if you write an answer like this, okay, if you write an answer like Okay, like this. This is also I copied from the. So if you write a expression in the else part, okay, there are some students who are confused about this concept. They have one expression for if, and they have another expression for else. Then this is wrong, okay? So you only have one expression for the if, okay? For the else part, it will be executed when the if expression is false. In other words, for the else part, right? If the else part does not need an expression, okay? We only need one expression for the if part, okay? For the if part, it means this part is wrong, okay? This part. This expression for the else part is wrong. Okay, don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. Okay, that's a problem. Okay, you only have one expression for the if part. Okay, one expression for the if part. So that's the thing I want to emphasize. Okay, want to emphasize. So the next concept is nested decision structure. What is that? It is inside one if statement, you can have another if statement okay it can be nested you can create nested decision structures to test more than one condition nested means one inside another proper indentation is important to create easily readable code so this is the general form you see that we have the first if structure if else right if else inside the if part we have another if else structure inside the first if else structure it is nested okay so now see how c sharp will execute the code so c sharp will first check this the first the all side if expression if this expression is false then the first if part will hold if part will be skipped okay 
C sharp will go to the else statement directly. However, if the outside, we call it outside if else structure, this expression, it is true, right? Then C sharp will go inside. Go inside the if block curly braces and C sharp will execute the second, right? The second if else structure. For the second if else structure, right? Then C sharp will X try to evaluate the second expression to see if we need to execute the if or the else. If or the else. This is nested. In other words, if the first expression is false, okay? If the first expression is false, then the second whole if, the second whole if else structure will not be executed. It will be skipped. The second if else structure will be evaluated, will be executed only if the first expression is true. Okay, and the first expression is true. So this is nested decision structures. Okay, nested decision structures. So this is one example. Okay, this is one example. So for the first condition, we want to check if salary is no less than 50,000. If it is false, so the user will see a message, minimum salary requirement not, not met, okay? If salary is above 40,000, means the condition is true, then C sharp, right? We will try to check the second if else structure. The second if will be years on job is no less than two. OK, if it is false. The user will see a message display minimum years at current job not met. OK, minimum years at current job not met. If the second condition uh, expression is true, so the user will see a message. You qualify for the loan. You see, this is a nested decision structure. OK, so in the outside decision structure, so the condition will be salary is greater or equal than 50,000, okay? In the inside, the second uh, uh, logic expression, decision structure, the condition will be years on job is greater or equal than two, okay? So if the first expression is not satisfied, so the second condition years on job is greater or equal than two will not be checked. It the whole this second part will not be executed. So user will see a message minimum salary requirement not met. Okay. However, if salary is greater or equal than forty thousand, that condition is true. C sharp will try to check the second condition. Years on job is greater or equal than two. Okay. That is the nested structure. Okay. So this is a code for the previous example. This code matches the previous slide of flowchart. You see, for the first if structure, salary is great or equal than 40,000. If it is false, C sharp will jump to else. Decision label dot text property. User will see the message minimum salary requirement not met. Okay. If salary is not less than 40,000, C sharp will go inside this if. Okay, go inside this whole if part, this if part. And check this if L, the second if L structure. The condition is years, year on job is greater or equal than two. If that is also true, right? Then the user will see a message in the label, you qualify for the loan. So if salary is above 40,000, but the second condition year on job is not greater or equal than two, the user will see a message minimum years at the current job not met. OK, so for your case. So you need to fully understand how the code will work. How the code will work. OK, how the code will work. You have to understand it. So we have some examples. We have some examples. Assume that the above set of statements are given. Assume that salary is 40,000 and year on job equals one. What will be the content in the label? D 
decision label after we execute these statements. So if we go there, the first condition salary is no less than 40,000. That is true. OK, the second year on job equals one. It means the condition year on job is greater or equal than two is not true. It means it's the C sharp will go to the, this else part, right? So the user will see the decision message. Minimum years at current job not met. OK, minimum year at current job not met. OK, you have to be very clear about what will be the result. Okay, what will be the result? So for the second example, assume that the above set of statements are given. Assume that salary equals 30,000 and year on job equals three. What will be like the content in the label? Decision label after we execute these statements. OK, still you need to go back to the. Uh, decision structure. So salary is not in this example. Salary is 30,000. It means when C sharp. Try to evaluate the expression for the first if, right? C sharp finds, oh, salary which equals 30,000 is not greater or equal than 40,000. It means salary is greater or equal to 40,000. The condition is false. Okay, this condition is false. So this whole if part, right? The first, the big if part will be skipped. C sharp will jump to the outside, we call it outside else part, which is the user will see the message minimum salary requirement not met. OK, minimum salary requirement not met. So it means so the decision label, you will display the message minimum salary requirement not met. OK, not met. OK. So let's finish this and we are done for today. OK, the, the next one it is if else if statement if else if statement you can also create a decision structure that evaluates multiple conditions to make the final decision use the if else if statement the elf clause that appears at the end of and is known as the trailing else and is optional its statements are executed when none of the preceding ifs are true. OK, like this. You see this if expression, we have statements or else if another expression with statements or else if a third expression with statements with this bunch of things. In the end, you have one else. OK, it is if else if statement. So what's the logic flow for that statement? C sharp will first check the first expression to see it true or false. If it is true, C sharp will execute this if part, right? Then anything else will be skipped. That's it. However, if this expression is false, then C sharp will move to this else part and evaluate the second expression. Okay, in this case, if the second expression is is true. Then C sharp will execute the second if part, right? Then skip the rest of the code. However, if the first expression is false, the second ex expression is 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 false is is also false, right? Then C sharp will move to next else else if to evaluate the third expression. Okay. Similarly, if that expression is true, C sharp execute the third if part. Then skip the uh, anything else. Okay. Otherwise, C sharp will move to next else if part. Okay. It is try to evaluate the previous if. If it is true, execute the corresponding statements. Then skip. If it is false, C sharp will move to next expression. OK, that's how it works. With that is how it works, OK? So here is one example. You see that if grid is above 90, if it's 92, for example, grid equals 92, it's A, right? Else means if grid is not grid or equal to 90, check if grid, grid is greater than 80. It means one grid is less than 90, but grid is greater than 80, right? In this case, message should be. 
Else means grid is not greater than 90. Grid is not than 80. It means grid is less than 80, right? But it is if it's above 70, so it means we have a message C, right? Else means not no less than 90, not no less than 80, not no less than 70, right? Then if no less than 60, the grid is D, right? If all previous if expressions are false, it means if the grid is less than 60, right? The final grid will be F, okay? So this is if else if structure, okay? So these uh, decision structures are widely used in data analytics, okay? For students who are not familiar with computer programming, but who are who really want to learn useful techniques and knowledge in data or business analytics, okay? Then the decision structure is a very important topic for you because they are widely used all kinds of different algorithms. Okay, all kinds of different algorithms. Okay, so here is one simple example. Assume that there is a int variable grid and a string variable letter grid. Write an if l if statement to set letter grid equal to good if grid is no less than 80, 85, pass if grid is below 85 but no less than 60, and fill if grid is below 60. In this case, 85 will be first if letter grid is good, else if grid is less grid no less than 60, pass, else, fail, right? This is a very similar example as this one, okay, and this one, okay?